Hey, welcome back to Real Talk. Thanks for hanging out with us. He's Joe. I'm Brad. We're taking questions from the internet, remember? And we're eating nuts we're, because they're fine. not just for display. That's true. Sometimes you just need that's to eat true. what's on display. And I think what we need to show people is you've had a few <laughs> so far today. And I didn't tell you that I have a nut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you bring a heavy pen? You put these things in front of me. I uh, feel like good. I'm Eve, and this is the tree of life, and you just said, don't just touch don't the nuts. Don't touch those. This oh is my gosh, that's hilarious. Please excuse me. <laughs> I don't even think there's a garbage can over there, so I'm not sure what you just did. There's, there's some place special. I, got, I was picking up the EpiPen, too. Okay, good. Welcome to Real Talk. I'm Joe. Brad. <laughs> so we did a, suit, uh, a search on Google of what are people asking about related to faith things. And we're talking about those questions, right? And you and Mikkel so, did a great one last week. I loved last week's episode. Do you think that carrots help your vision? Oh uh, no, that's completely false. <laughs> See, I'm still I don't perplexed think it's, it's by that. It. Listen, but, I, I had a guy, I grew up with a guy that ate so many that. carrots because he thought for sure it would help. It doesn't, no, it's asinine. This is asinine. <laughs> Your skin orange. This is, it does. Oh. That can true. That that's true. true. So you don't that eat too true. many Doritos, it's changed your skin color too. <laughs> Just it's on your fingers. fingers. Oh, gosh. Wow. Okay. So today, our guest here is in a place of prominence because people want to know what does the Bible say about evolution and dinosaurs? Why? So, welcome to Dinosaurs and Evolution and Jesus. Jesus Dinosaurs. <laughs> Why evolution and dinosaurs? Aren't they separate topics? Yeah, but they kind of get, I think people cram them together in some ways. Really? Yeah. So when you're Googling, you add that phrase? I don't know. Dinosaurs and evolution. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. So let's talk, let's talk okay, about Okay, so let's talk about this. Which so part? Let's start with evolution. Ooh. Let's just start there. Okay. So just super high level is, you look at evolution, macroevolution we're talking, microevolution, we change all the time, right? Well, that's fine. We're talking macro evolution. Macro, which means what? Really big. So, but... <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought you just wanted me to define macro. No, no. It means that over the time, over the course of time, species are changing into other, other species, species and developing into not just sort of this lower class yeah. of, of organisms. So a moth changing colors to adapt, a lizard getting... That happens all the time. Right? That's clearly scientific. That's adaptation within species. Yes. You're talking about... This is a cat one day, yes. and over a billion years, it becomes a frog. Sure, I think that that's back. Example? I think that's backwards, <laughs> but yes, yeah, sure. So that so that macro level of evolution. Let me start here. Is that opposed to scripture? Yes. Yes. Tell I me why. So. I don't, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted to be an emphatic Christian that's polarized oh. on every topic. Oh, oh anything great. you ask me, no. <laughs> Yes, black and white, it's not in the Bible. No, I think I have a better answer Okay, so give me a better answer than that. Well, I would, Genesis is very clear that God creates Created. things according to species. Repeats it over and over in Genesis 1. Yeah. You go there and highlight it, I don't know, five, seven times. He creates according to species, according to species, according to species, according to species. Of their kind, of their kind, of yeah. their kind, of their kind. So a cat becoming a frog or a frog becoming a cat would seem to contradict everything the Bible teaches about species. Okay. Is that, I mean, do you... Yeah, I agree with you. God created. Pretty simple. Like you could God just created disagree an animal just for fun. Play. Oh, I'm sure we will at some point. How about theistic evolution? So oh. theistic evolution is sort of this bend on mm -hmm. this. No, yes, it wasn't a big bang. Uh, there is a creator. Mm -hmm. Or maybe maybe there was a big bang, but it was done by the creator. The banger and, was and, the and, creator. <laughs> yes. It, so theistic evolution, or some people call it God-guided evolution. Mm -hmm. So the idea of single-cell organism developing into multi-cell, developing into various species is true, but it's God doing the work. Do you buy that? Is that, uh, just to try to understand what you're asking, because yeah. you're I'm not smart. setting, I'm not trying to set you <laughs> up this time. Is that like, like God creating something to look old? Is it in that same train of thought? Uh, no, like, I think it's you're almost jumping like, ahead. It's almost like he has, to, it, it, if the uh, theistic evolution means that God needed a process, oh, then I would say no. Okay. Could God choose to use a process? 
from single cell, double cell, triple cell, complex, could he choose to use a process? Yes. Does he need a process? No. Based on what scripture tells us, is did he do that? I mean, what we know from scripture. So that, that's a pro, there's a problem there because based on what we know from scripture, he spoke yeah. and these things happened. Okay. But is the intent of the author to describe the how when Moses or David in the Psalm says he spoke or these things happened, was it intent to be a process or a how answer instead of, so, I don't know, what do you, uh, like, he, I think the biblical language that's used is he spoke and things happened. Yeah, I think the biggest problem with theistic evolution is that, um, again, God could do that. I think the biggest problem where it cuts against scripture is that he created male and female in his image. It seems to be at a point he makes male and female, not from something else. Oh, oh, oh. So it's like he doesn't, I don't think scripture would say he makes male and female oh. from a chimpanzee in his, like in this so generation. You're actually speaking about <clears throat> making humans, not just in general. I mean, you could speak of it in general, but I think the biggest problem with that is creating clearly. humanity. Yeah, clearly. He can't turn a monkey into a human no. being and go, now that human being is in my image, or now that being is in my yeah, image. I turned it into my image. The scri like, no. Scripture just doesn't read that way. I don't think. And certainly, does if we're creating God's image, does that mean that he became a monkey and then had oh, to transition good. a monkey into a... Good. It's like, no. I mean, God has always been a thinking loving, mm -hmm. rational, yep. independent being. And if we're created in his image, then we are thinking independent, yeah. rational beings like him too. So there's no need for a process. There's no need yeah. for any of that based That's on good. the scripture teaching. All right, so we're going to push theistic evolution aside too. Okay. Wow, I didn't think Let's keep going. You know what's so interesting to me? I was thinking about this about evolution. I'm sure someone out there will tell me why I'm wrong, send me an email about it. It's fine. It's great. I want to hear it. But I think my biggest problem with just any idea of evolution is you start with a single cell organism. Well, you start with matter and space, and eventually you get to single cell organism. It has to be, because there can only be one to start, it has to be an asexual yes. being that can reproduce yes. itself. Yes. So eventually, to get to multiple mm -hmm. species, you have to have out of that male and female that are evolved into at the exact same time so that they can procreate. But couldn't that How happen is that over possible? billions of years? No, it's not. Even if you believe in that, billions of years is not long enough. I mean, I don't know how you measure billions of years. I don't know. Backwards. Let's talk about dinosaurs. Let's talk about carbon dating. Does, oh, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It's a joke. Oh my goodness, you just blew up the internet. <laughs> how, can you, how can you tell me that your methodology works? Science says you have to be able to observe something and repeat something. Mm -hmm. You can't observe, oh, we carbon dated that to be a billion years old. You can't prove that. You weren't there a billion yeah, years that's ago. That's interesting. That, 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 it's interesting. And, and it's interesting, the whole conversation about this with science, because I would be all for believing in macro evolution if someone could show it to me, because good science is good science. Like, and you and I've said that good we should have started there. We think that, that oh. good Bible and good science exist Are together. Always allies. Yeah. They're not enemies at all. Yeah. So it's like if someone could show me the actual sort of outworking scientifically of every, you know, the single cell becoming a double cell, becoming a triple cell, becoming a monkey, becoming a human, becoming us. If I could see that scientifically instead of believing it as a hypothesis, because the current view remains a hypothesis. There's sure. not repeatable, provable hypothesis that gets tested, proven in the lab over and over and over again, which I think is called science. Yeah. So it's like, well, even carbon dating is hard. Because if I'm going to actually think of carbon dating, I want to be able to prove it, repeat it. Like, here's my hypothesis about carbon dating. Right. And I'm going to be able to prove it in a lab over and over and over again. And therefore, my theory becomes fact, mm -hmm. not a hypothesis. Mm -hmm. We're fans of that. We're fans of yes, good science. good science. Yeah. Okay, let's and talk about dinosaurs. dinosaurs. we got to go to dinosaurs. Why, do, why go from theistic evolution and carbon dating to they, dinosaurs? Listen, this these is what are the, the people, questions the, the people, people are have. asking. Where are the dinosaurs? Yes. Are dinosaurs in the Bible? Nope. Oh. Just... You are emphatic. I am. Nope. Nope. 
That's are good. these nuts delicious? Yes. Yes, they are. They are. That I can say empirically. You should eat more of them. I'm going to have, uh, again, an allergic reaction. Do, okay, dinosaurs, uh, are we in agreement that all beings that have ever been on the earth were created in the Genesis narrative, not pre any of that? I don't know. Like, so God, if, if, Let's assume for a moment. <laughs> Where are you going? Let's with assume this? for a moment that dinosaurs existed. God created those as part of His creation of animals and life in Genesis one. Yes. All life was created by God. Okay. Is that? Yeah. So if dinosaurs were alive, they were created by God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're being really non-committal in that. I'm trying to figure out what you're doing. <laughs> Nothing existed prior to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God, and God yeah. only. Yes. And, and then he creates after yes. that. Agreed. Completely agreed that he speaks and things come into motion. So it's not like we could have dinosaurs before Genesis 1. Like, yeah. The, no. So there's this, this theory out there that dinosaurs, in fact, didn't exist. Okay. Well, how would we have Jurassic Park? Though? But Oh. I don't know. There's a theory that dinosaurs didn't actually exist, mm -hmm. but that God created a working universe. Because no, you know, no one, we haven't seen dinosaurs, right? So we're relying on a fossil record. So there's this theory that God created a working universe, and part of that was he made the universe, you mentioned earlier, to look old, which means he put bones in the ground. And, and, and some people go, oh, is he trying to trick us? No, that's actually part of an ecosystem that fertilizes soil is decay. Right? So some have said, suggested that God placed those there and, and dinosaurs never really were on the earth. What would be your some, thoughts? Wh I, wh what would be the reason why I would have to prove whether dinosaurs were on the earth or not? It's interesting. Well, but, so let me back up. Let me give you the evidence for the, for the working, I should have said this. Let me give you the evidence for a working, old-looking uh, universe, right? God didn't make Adam. So wait, wait, you're saying that he did this to make it old, and it had a, the byproduct was it fertilized the earth, even if it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm saying that because I don't think it was God who was just trying to trick us or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, what's this? Yeah. Okay, the reason people would say that he created a working universe is, for example, Adam and Eve weren't created as babies. They weren't, they didn't come out of a womb. They weren't infants, right? They were some ability to care for themselves. So mm -hmm. we have to assume they were of some age, right? And it seems like even the way he does plants and animals and stuff, it's not just, he, he makes chickens. He doesn't just make an egg, right? And so it's like he creates things that, that are, are working. Right. Yes. He starts something working. Oh, and using that same thought to the whole planet. Yes, correct. That the planet was actually working. Correct. What do you think about that theory? I don't, I don't, I don't like it. That's great. I mean, I guess what I hear in that is the, go back to the first question. First question, are the bi dinosaurs in the Bible? Well, people will make the Bible say there's dinosaurs there. Yeah, I mean, Job 40 right? talks about the behemoth. It's, it's interesting. Interesting. So it's like, okay, so because I can't find, and this is the proverbial question, where do you find dinosaurs in the Bible? Well, I could say that Job, yeah. the Leviathan, the whatever that yeah, is, that what it's yeah. referring to? Like, eh. okay, so just because something isn't in the Bible, does that mean it doesn't exist? Oh, uh, definitely not. Right? So there's a lot of things that aren't in the Bible, Bible that yeah. exist. Sure. So I don't need to worry or think about and create another parallel explanation for something because I can't find it in the Bible. Yeah, but you can have a little fun and think about this stuff. I could, yes, I could, <laughs> but I think the Christian, is, are Christians the ones advocating for that thinking? Oh, I know of a particular Christian who is advocating for that thinking. Yeah, and no, I'm asking the question. Like, there's a, it's Christians who are advocating for yeah. this working universe. Yes. I mean, is that a good a hypothesis? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of interesting to think about. You should think about it more. You're like, <laughs> are you a particular Christian? <laughs> I'm the Christian who's <laughs> advocating for this position. I mean, is it? I is think that it's a possible? really interesting theory. It is interesting. I, you know, but again, like I look at it and go, do I? What drives? What drives that? So you're trying to make sense of your world. Just trying that's, to make sense of that's things. That's a beautiful thing. That's yeah, a, just trying see, to make sense of things. I can. I can advocate for and completely support trying to make sense of things and going, how does this fit together? 
I think it's really interesting that we've never found an entire dinosaur skeleton. We've found pieces, we've found significant percentages, but we've never found an entire skeleton. Why is that? Like, I just think there's interesting things also, about it. And I'm not sure that you want to go there with this, but we can because it's real talk. And how much time? Yeah, Who cares how much time keep, we have? We keep it moving. You know, the thought that I know some Christians think, you know, dinosaurs are become extinct during the flood, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's hard. That's hard. I have to I have a problem that. with I that. I have a problem with that. Why? My problem with that is why wouldn't God... He says to Adam bring or Noah, every, him, yeah, bring every, every living creature so that moves along have, the ground. And it says Noah did just as God commanded yeah. him. They had to have, if they lived, they had to have died after the flood. Right. So is that a part of it where the, where the flood is what kills it? But that, I don't know if that lines up with the biblical text because they would be alive before the flood yeah. and they would be a part of the collection that Noah would have to do. Yes. Okay, so let me turn this one more, like, let me turn this oh, to why, because there's a reason it matters. Because science says that dinosaurs died out before human beings existed. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Before they existed. Yes. A lot of science says human beings and dinosaurs didn't live at the same time, right? So the, Dinosaurs would died out before human beings exist. Can that, can that be possible as it lines up with scripture? No. Because the moment God creates. It's like, okay, so that's hard because you're, is the, is the, what's the timing of Genesis 1, right? So you pose that yes. question. It's like, okay, yes. if a, if it's a day, literally, or is it a day figuratively? As Christians, you can argue both sides of that. Like, yeah, agreed. Get into a whole conversation about that. <clears throat> agreed. So is it possible that animals were created before humans in the Genesis account? Yes. Yes. So is it possible? I guess from the Genesis account, depending on how you read the order and timing, they could exist before. But I don't know how science can prove that, that they existed before humans. Well, I, Is it possible that humans were over here and dinosaurs were over here? Yes, I could give you that. Here's my problem with the theory that dinosaurs died out before human beings existed, is that before sin, there's no death. Yeah. So oh, they couldn't die. They can't die oh. before human beings oh. sin. So if you say that, then then the fall doesn't really happen. And if the fall doesn't really happen, we don't need Jesus. See, evolution, dinosaurs, and Jesus. I told you I was getting there. That's all you wanted to get to? No, I just think that's really interesting. Like, So you could, could yes. That from the text we would the know wages that. of sin is death. Mm -hmm. There is no death before sin. So we, you know, you don't need Jesus if there's no death. There's no sin. But all of these things are hypoth like all of it, right? So it's like when when did not the theory of death and sin? It's okay. clear biblical <laughs> teaching. But when did dinosaurs exist on Earth? Yes. And how did they become extinct? All of its hypothesis, isn't it? I mean, there's no, yeah. there's no, right? So it's like we're all left to conjecture. Yes. What we can know for sure is, did God create dinosaurs? Yes. Maybe. If they existed, God created them. But they may never, do they exist just as bones? Maybe. Interesting. <laughs> you didn't know we could talk about this for so long, did you? I... And what's the takeaway? You know what, Pastor Joe, why don't you tell the people the takeaway here? Wow, I am befuddled. The takeaway is befuddled. Have some nuts. And thanks for hanging out with us. See you next time. We confuse you more than we help you. Welcome to Faith Church.